I recently came across this hilarious post over on r slash Linux. Gnome Archive Manager, also known as File Roller, stole 106.3 gigabytes of storage on my laptop. And this post for the subreddit kinda got quite a bit of attention, but not entirely because of the problem. The problem is obviously a big deal as well, but the problem itself is actually fairly simple. The file roller, like many of the archive utilities out there, alongside extracting files, also allows you to view them. Now, to ensure you don't just instantly run out of RAM when you are trying to view a really big archive, what it's going to do is cache those files somewhere on your system and then load them from the cache as you are viewing them. These files are cached into home slash dot cache slash dot fr dash and then some random string of letters and numbers. And then you're able to happily view the files in the application without your system absolutely dying. So far, all of that sounds fine. Here is the problem though. Nothing cleans up the cache, so it ends up looking like this. These are files dating all the way back to 2020. And the issue reported over on the GitLab is even worse than that. This has files going back 10 years. So it is very clear it is not automatically cleaning up its cache files. There is no reason for any of these files to still exist after a day, let alone after multiple years. The second problem is the name of the files. Firstly, why are these folders inside of the dot cache folder dot some name? Why are they a hidden folder inside of a hidden folder? There's no practical reason for that. The purpose of a hidden folder is to hide that thing from the regular user. But if they're already in a hidden folder, why would you try to hide it again? The dot can just be removed with no change whatsoever. The second problem, and far more importantly, is the FR part itself. FR can mean a bunch of different things. It can mean French. It can mean some options in RM. It is kind of a nightmare to find anything about these cache files if you don't already know they are related to the file roller. The third problem is more of a being nice to other applications as opposed to a real serious problem. When you have cache files, it is generally good practice if you're going to make a bunch of them to store them in one folder so it is very clear what those cache files are related to. In this case though, they are being stored directly in the root of the cache folder. So you just have this giant wall of files and if you use the file roller, you're only going to see the file roller cache. Everything else is going to be hidden after, you know, any reasonable length of time of using it. As we previously saw, the problem has been reported over on the file roller GitLab. This was done about three months ago. But this is not the first time that anybody has noticed this problem. The first time seems to be quite a few years ago, all the way back in November 10th, 2009. What are these .fr-star directories? But that's not when it was added to the code base. It's actually been present in the code base a little bit longer, since all the way back in 2004. Now, it can put files into the slash temp directory, but most of the time they're going to be dumped into your cache. Temp is much nicer because on most Linux configurations, temp is going to be automatically cleaned out. And here's the thing, 
it's not like this is a duplicate issue that maybe got rejected at some point. Maybe, you know, someone tried to start working on it, but it never ended up being finished. This seems to be an original issue that nobody really cared about until relatively recently. Maybe it's just that everybody using the file roller who opens up a bunch of archives was just clearing out their cache manually or had some other system doing it. But whatever the reason, only very recently is a fix being discussed. However, not this user, but the user who made the original Reddit thread had some, let's just say, interesting comments on the matter. This is a big part of the reason why the thread got so much attention. The real thing that annoys me is the asinine decision to name their temporary folders to get placed in the user-wide cache directory, this name right here. At first, I thought my computer was being invaded by French people. Yep, that's obviously supposed to be a joke, but you know, Linux people don't know what jokes are. Do you know how I figured out which program generated the cache folders? I had to run strings on every single program in slash user slash bin using find exec and then grep the output for dot fr dash. All because the developers were too lazy to type file roller, gnome archive manager, or literally anything better than fr. Do they have any idea how many things abbreviate to fr and how ungoogleable that is? Also, someone did create an issue asking GNOME to store their temporary folders in proper directories that's automatically cleaned up. It's three months old now, and the last activity before my comment was two months ago. Changing .cache to slash var slash temp or slash temp does not take three months. In conclusion, if anyone from GNOME reads this, fix this issue. 100 gigabytes being stolen by files that should be temporary is unacceptable, and the suggested fix of storing them in slash var slash temp is really not hard to implement. Thank you. Now, minus the French people, all of these problems are completely legitimate problems also being mentioned over on the GitLab. The issue is how the problem is being framed, and there is great value in showing what you're trying to show in a more professional manner. And as to be expected, a lot of the comments on this thread are basically telling the author to stop being entitled, get off Reddit, and go and fix the problem themselves. Do keep in mind, while the GNOME file roller is an official part of the GNOME project. It is stored on the GNOME GitLab, and at a time in the past, it was a core part of GNOME. Nowadays, that final point isn't exactly the case. Ever since GNOME 41, it has not been a core part of GNOME. It's an optional thing that distros can choose to include. And when that happens, Development is going to slow down quite a bit, and certain things that probably should be addressed are going to take longer and longer to deal with. I think a big part of the reason why people still think the GNOME file roller is this core part of GNOME is, like many things with GNOME, Ubuntu is to blame. Ubuntu makes a lot of modifications to the way that GNOME works, including a bunch of extra plugins, a bunch of extra applications, and one of those applications is the GNOME file roller. And there was this discussion being had about whether it should be removed with 23.04. Prior to that point, it is absolutely being shipped out of the box. Now, when a project is in this state where it's not really clear who's actually using it, whether it still should be developed, a lot of people that would otherwise work on the project likely are doing other things instead. Whilst there are absolutely people employed to work on FOSS software, see the GNOME leadership, see many of the Manjaro devs, especially those that are listed on the Manjaro website, many of the Critter devs and things like that 
all of these people are getting paid, but the vast majority of people out there working on FOSS are completely volunteers. Maybe they get a couple of dollars on their GitHub sponsors or their coffee, but it's certainly not enough to be doing this full time. And when you're not doing things full time, you don't really care what other people tell you you need to implement. Generally, what you're going to work on is the things that are grabbing your attention. For the record, the reason why it was removed from Core Gnome and being discussed for removal from Ubuntu is basically because Nautilus does a lot of that same functionality. The extracting part is already in Nautilus, so you don't really need an external application to be doing the exact same thing. Now, I don't believe Nautilus can view the contents of an archive, so you will need to use the file roller for that, and I believe the file roller has a much wider range of supported formats as well. But Nautilus is going to cover the main things you care about. So for most people, that is going to be perfectly fine. Now, I do want to make something very clear. I don't think you necessarily have to go and fix a problem yourself to be contributing to FOSS. I don't think there is anything wrong with making a blog post, making a video like I would do, or writing a Reddit thread. I do think there is a lot of value in shining a light on a problem that is not being addressed. If you have a platform or you have some way to get people's attention, I think there is value in getting people talking about a problem and showing that there is interest in getting it dealt with. This is pretty much what I'm trying to do here on this channel a lot of the time. I'm mentioning some problem and hopefully someone who knows how to deal with that can go and deal with that problem. Maybe it's a problem that I'm experiencing, maybe it's a problem that someone else is experiencing, but something that I've had to learn especially over time is how you portray that problem and how you are discussing it. Always keep in mind that most of the people out there are just volunteers. And if they are just volunteers, you are not entitled to their time. Now, there's an argument to be made for someone who actually is getting paid, but that's a whole separate issue. And this thread is a really great example of how not to explain your problem. A lot of the insults in here, a lot of the way that things are phrased, could just be removed because the rest of the thread is really, really good. And the poster of that thread did comment on the GitLab as well and explain their problem in a much more succinct way, in a much more, you know, sensible way, along with getting involved in discussing how this problem might actually be addressed going forward. And even though the Reddit thread certainly had its problems, as it stands now, the problem actually is being addressed, so it did achieve its goal. There are a bunch of open issues and open pull requests right now for dealing with exactly this problem. File utils, use file roller in temp names, reprioritize folders to go for temp before .cache, and force clean the temporary subfolders cache on startup or shutdown when a single instance is running. So hopefully for any users out there who are still using the file roller, this problem does get addressed. And finally, the basically 20 year old problem can actually go away. But let me know your thoughts on how these problems should be addressed and how they should be discussed. I think there is a big difference with discussing something in a public forum and then ranting about it in like an IRC chat or a Discord. In those places, you can reasonably expect that no one affiliated with the project is going to see it. But when it's in some public forum, some public website like this, I think you should probably approach it in a more professional manner, but maybe you disagree. I would love to know. So if you like the video, go uh, comment. Yeah, comment. Like the video. Go like the video. If you really like the video and you want to go and support the channel, be one of these amazing... I forgot my outro. Amazing people over here. Check out the Patreon. Subscribe to Zelly Berape. Linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And it's gnome, not gnome.